gospel to celebrate our 14th church anniversary. Living faith, give it up, give it up, give it up. At this time, we're going to go for a word of prayer. If you all will pray with me. Oh, most gracious Father, we stand before you right now, giving you praise, giving you honor, and giving you glory. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for keeping us thus far. And thank you for bringing us into the house of worship right now. Oh, God, we pray for the sick. We pray for the shut-in. We pray for the bereaved. We pray for everyone up under the sound of my voice. God, if there's anybody that need healing right now, by in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, they are already healed. And we call it to be so in the name of Jesus you said if there's any sick among us let them call upon the elders of the church and God we're thanking you for their healing right now in the name of Jesus God if it's something that's going on in our bodies and we don't even know about it thank you for healing us right now in the name of Jesus and God we ask that you regulate each and everyone's mind on today thank you for a mind to want to serve you thank you for a mind to want to praise you thank you for a mind to want to edify you and glorify you in the name of Jesus. Now God we pray for the man of God that's going to bring the word on today. We ask that you crown his head with more wisdom more knowledge and more understanding. Give him a rain of word right now because we need to hear from you oh God. If we don't hear from you we don't know what we will do oh God. And we ask that you speak through the man servant right now in the name of Jesus. God we thank you for Pastor Paul and his family oh God thank you for using them in this hour as today oh God thank you for putting them over this sheepfold oh God and we just want to tell you thank you we thank you for the absent part of the church wherever they may be whatever they may be doing oh God we ask that you bless them right now in the name of Jesus and God we'll forever praise you we'll forever magnify you and we will forever glorify you everybody up under the sound of my voice give God praise in this house hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus God you're worthy Lord you're worthy Lord you're worthy and we praise you and we magnify you and we glorify you on today in the name of Jesus and at this time if there be any choir members or praise and worship team members from Second Baptist we welcome you all to come now and I'll bring and bring us in with praise and worship let's give God praise for Second Baptist as they come before us right now thank you God give God praise don't stop praising him don't stop praising him he's worthy he's worthy Hallelujah, Jesus.
shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. Yes, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me, and so I'm going to speak until the atmosphere, as I am going to I shall, I shall have what I decree. What I decree. Yes, I yes, I believe it belongs to me. Yes, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. Well, I am going to speak into the atmosphere. Yes, I am going to. Speak it, 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 declare it, declare it, declare it, declare it.
belongs to me. So I am going to. Yes, I am going to. One last time, speak it. Speak into the atmosphere. Amen. Somebody give God another hand clap of praise. Come on, y'all can do better than that. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, come on. He's worthy to be praised. That would have been all right if I had to say give God a hand clap of praise for Baker. But I'm talking about the one that woke you up this morning, kept you in your right mind kept the other vehicle on the right side of the road you ought to give him all the praise and all the glory because he's worthy he's worthy to be praised giving honor to God our creator his son Jesus our redeemer the Holy Spirit our comforter and keep your amen giving honor to my friend my brother amen Dr. Jamie Terrell Paul amen praise the Lord and what I've discovered is that you can't adequately thank God for the man of God without thanking God for the woman that walks beside him. Amen. In ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for, for the first lady. Amen. Of the greatest church on this side of the Jordan. Amen. Praise Lady Baker. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. And he's a worthy to be praised. Amen. Giving honor to um to everyone in your respective places. Amen. We thank God for one of the greatest church. They let this little country boy pastor them. Amen. And that's the second Baptist church. Amen. 800 North Decatur Street. Amen. So we're excited about what God is doing. There is a word from the Lord, not to worry your patience long, amen, but long enough. Um, and we're going to go back, we're going to go back this morning. We was in Exodus chapter 32, but we're going to be in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, amen. Exodus chapter 3. There is a word from the Lord, Exodus chapter 3, and we'll, we'll read, we'll read verses, um, we'll read, we're going to read, we're going to read at verse 1, amen, it's a lot of reading, but um, when the reading is long, then the message will be short. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I want you to get the context of the text. And this is what it says in um, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. It said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mount of God, even to Horeb. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame and a fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will, Moses said, I would now turn aside and see this great sight, 
while the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw nigh hither, put off thy shoes from, from thy feet. For the place whereon thou stand is holy ground. Moreover, um, he said, I am the glory of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid, for he was afraid to look. And this is what he says. He says, um, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cries by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of, Egypt, of the Egyptian and to bring them out of the land unto a good land and a hold up hold up hold up let me back it up and say it again verse 8 he said I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large and unto the land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And verse 9 says, um, Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. And that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. If I would, if I would, uh, for for a theme or thought or some money, throw us a look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time. And that, that's that's what I want to talk about. It's it's time. Um, ushers, ushers, you may rest. That um, my, my, my dearly beloved, what I've discovered is that that one of um, the hardest things. To determine is what God want me to do and when God wants me to do it. That, 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 that's the hardest thing to determine in life. That when God wants me to do something, what God wants me to do. That um that that um that when you look at the text that the children of Israel that they've that um that 40 years later that God comes to Moses. Now 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 now, now Moses done messed up. Moses done made some mistakes. And the Bible says that he's on the backside of a mountain and he's working for his father-in-law Jethro. And God shows up. Hold up, hold up. Let me back it up again. That, that, that Moses done messed up. Moses been on the run. He's killed a man. And, and if I would look at Moses' life, I would think Moses' life is over. That, that, that if I would look at where Moses is, I would think that Moses don't have a future. But I like to take the text said that 40 years later, Y'all don't know when to shout. 40 years later, after Moses no made some mistake, after Moses no messed up, that God shows up on the backside of nowhere and tell Moses it's time. Uh, let, me, let me preach to three people. Let me say it again. That Mo God shows up on the backside of nowhere and tell Moses, I got something for you to do. Lord have mercy. And I want to talk to somebody. After 40 years, it would seem like that Moses don't qualify for an assignment. 
after 40 years of making mistakes, after 40 years, it don't seem like it's possible for Moses to get an assignment. And the Bible says, Lord have mercy, after 40 years, God showed up and tell Moses, I got something to do. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can I talk to somebody? Can I tell you that what's impossible with man is possible with God. That's what I stopped by to tell five people that what's possible, impossible with man is possible with God. And I just got a word for three people that God is able to do the impossible. That's what I want to tell somebody. What are you saying, Pastor? That God is able to do the impossible. Let me say it again. That God is able to do the impossible. Let me say it on this side. God is able to do the impossible. Let me say it to this side. God is able to do the impossible. What are you saying, Pastor? The God that we serve is able to do the impossible exceedingly above all you can ever ask or think and I ain't talking to everybody but I'm talking to fire somebody that you in a situation that it looks like it's impossible I stop by to tell you that God is able to do the impossible you want to look at your doggone neighbor shake them and rock them huh, and tell your neighbor huh, get ready for the impossible huh. he's going to do the impossible with your child, the impossible in your marriage, the impossible in your business, the impossible in your finances, that God is getting ready to do the impossible. He's getting ready to do the impossible. So, 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 so what you're saying is that God is getting ready to do the impossible. So what it means for you and I, that we, you and I, we need to possess your possible. Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I just told you that God is able to do the impossible. So my job is to possess the possible. What are you saying, Baker? What I'm saying is that God would do what you can't do. But while God would do what you can't do, you need to do what you can do. Lord, help your boy. Oh, my God. What you mean, Pastor? You can fill out the application. You can write the business plan. You can, I wish I had somebody. You better look at your neighbor. Say, you do what's possible. And when you do what's possible, God will do what eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither had it entered into the heart of man. Oh my God, touch somebody and say, you do the possible. You do the possible and you leave the impossible up to God. You fill out the application. You write the business plan. You go back to school. You take the test. You work the plan and God will do what you can't do. What he, what, what he does, what, what God does, that um, he will do the impossible. And so what God is saying is, Baker, he said, um, but what I need you to do, I need you to possess what's possible. Yes. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? He said, Baker, he said, what I, what, what I mean is if I'm going to do the impossible, you got to stop being lazy. Oh my God, look at that. He, 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 he said, if I'm going to do the impossible in your life, you got to stop making excuses. Oh my God, oh my God. That, that if I'm going to do the impossible in your life, you got to stop talking about what you don't have. Lord, and start talking about who you do have. Lord have mercy. And, but why, Pastor? Because I can do all things. I wish I had somebody. Oh my God. I can do all things huh, through Christ that strengthens me. Oh my God. And I stopped by to talk to five people. Huh. You've been waiting and told my own waiting on God. Huh. And God said, I'm waiting on you. Huh. Because there are some things huh, that you can do huh, to get the business plan going. There are some things huh, that you can do huh, to get your money straight. There are some things huh, that you can do. 
Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. You know, that, 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 that what he says is, he said, um, that, that I'm able to do the, the impossible. He said, but what I need you to do is to possess your possible. Meaning that what you can do. That um that um that 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 that, that, that he, he tells um he comes after 40 years and talks to this brother by the name of Moses. And and Moses, um, Pastor Paul, he done messed up. M M Moses, y'all know Moses. You know Moses who got that anger problem. That can't control his anger and his anger. He got so mad that he saw somebody um, 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 being treated wrongfully and that anger rose up in him and he killed a man and he buried the man. But can I tell you, anytime you do something, somebody see you. And when it came another, oh my God, it came a time again where some folk were doing something and they said, Moses, you going to do us like you did that man you buried? Oh my God, you buried in the sand huh? because can I tell you how church folk do? Huh? Once they see you mess up, huh? they'll never let you, oh my God, huh? they'll never let you forget huh? your mess up, your mistake, your flaw, your propensities, and your proclivities. But I'm so glad huh? that I serve a God, huh? Lord have mercy, huh? that look beyond all my faults huh? and saw my needs. Need, huh? And I stopped by to tell folk huh? the same thing he just told Moses huh? that Moses is your time. Huh? I stopped by to tell 10 people huh? you up next. Huh? I stopped by to tell 10 people huh? you up next for the promotion. Huh? You up next for the turnaround. Huh? You up next for the breakthrough. Huh? You up next. So, so what are you saying, Pastor? Luke take, Luke take, say, but Pastor. How, that's the question, the question this afternoon, is how do I get where God wants me to be? That's the question, I took the long way. Oh my God. How do I get there, Pastor? I need to know how do I get where God wants me to be. Well, the first thing you got to understand is, is that if you want to get where God wants you to be, the first thing you got to understand is, is that, um, that God is perfecting your patience. He, he's perfecting your pace. Look at the text. Um, look at the text. See, look, look at where Moses is. That Moses, um, um, when God comes to him, um, that he's in the wilderness. That, that, that Moses is in a dry place. That, um, that this wilderness place for Moses um, is necessary. And I ain't talking to everybody, but I'm talking to, um, to a five somebody that lets you know that the wilderness in your life is necessary. Why, Pastor? Because it's in the wilderness where God develops you for where he's about to take you. See, 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 we don't like the wilderness. We like to be where everything jumping and everything popping. But God said that if you, oh my God, that if I'm going to, you're going to get what God has for you, he has to allow you to go through a dry season. He got to allow you to go through a season where ain't nothing going on, Lord have mercy. And it seems like ain't nothing is happening because it's in the wilderness where you worship him. It's in the wilderness where he develops you. Why, pastor, do I got to go through the wilderness? Because can I tell Tell you uh, that if God don't take you through the wilderness, uh, you won't have the character to stay where the blessing want to take you. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, see, somebody missed that. Uh, that God, oh my God. Uh, see, God said, I got to take you through a dry season. Uh, and what it's doing is developing you. Uh, it's developing character in you. Uh, because character uh, is not what people see. Uh, character huh, is who you are huh, where ain't nobody around huh, Lord have mercy huh, cause you can make me see anything huh, oh my God huh, and sometimes huh, that the person we meet huh, is not the real them huh, it's just their representatives huh, Lord have mercy huh. see that's why sugar huh, you can't oh my God huh, before you hook up with a joker huh, you got to spend some time with him huh, because when you first meet 
him. The date, the movie, the perfume, the manicures, that's just his representative. But oh my God. But when you get really to know the real joker, you know he can't find his taxes. He, oh my God. His credit messed up. He don't pay his bills on time. And you talking about you want to hook up with that joker and he can't even find his last five tax return. The devil is a lie. Because can I tell you, it's one thing to be a boyfriend, but it's another thing to be a husband. I wish I had somebody. That's a whole different type of responsibility. You take that on. Lord, Lord, help your boy. I'm trying to say, Lord, help your boy. Lord, I'm trying, Lord, Lord, I'm trying to tell you. Look at this. That, 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 that he's on the backside of the mountain because the mountain, the, the, the wilderness, because the wilderness is where, um, where, where he prepares him. And, 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 I, and I need somebody to know that, that, that you're ready for what God has for you. Um, and it seems like um, that you're wasting time. But, but I need to talk to three people to tell them you ain't wasting time. Um, God has you in a place because he's working on something. L let me talk to this side here. I stopped by to tell somebody God is working on something. Lord have mercy. Um, see, see, you frustrated because you're ready for it. But God got you in a place because he's working on something. Huh? See, see, you ready for God to open the door, but God got you there because he's working on something. Huh? And that's what I want to tell somebody. Huh? That if you're waiting, it's because he's working. Huh? But I stopped by to tell somebody huh? that your wait going to be worth it. Huh? Lord have mercy. Huh? Let me talk to somebody. Huh? Your wait huh? going to be worth it. Huh? See, you watching everybody else get the promotion, get the house, get the boo, get the bay, get the job. Huh? And you trying to figure out that you serving God, paying your time, doing praise and worship. Huh? And it ain't nothing happened for you yet it because he's working oh my god he's working on something huh? grab your neighbor shake them and rock them huh? and tell them he's working huh? I know you read it but he's working huh? I know you want it now but he's working huh? I know you anxious for it but he's working huh? he's working on it huh? oh my god huh? can I tell you this let me, let me tell you I'll oh, forget I went that one time I went to McDonald's right and what I did I um, they told me they told me every time I go to McDonald's they always give me cold fries they, they give me cold fries. They give me cold fries. But somebody put me on game. They said, they said what you got to do. They said, when you order your fries, you got to tell them no salt. You got to tell them no salt. You got to tell them no salt. I said, I said, I said what? Well, why you got to tell them that? He said, because of what they going to do. They going to fry yours fresh. He said, but then when you get to the window, you tell them, um, send me, give me some packs of salt. I said, Lord, help your boy. And so when I went up there, when I went up there, I went up there, right? I went up there, and when I got to the window, I had told her, I told her, I want, hey, let me get, I want fry with no salt. I don't, I don't pick the thing out. And then when I pulled up the window, they said, okay. They said, um, hey, could you pull over there in number two? I said, huh? They said, yeah, just pull over there in number two. And I was trying to figure out why I'm pulling over number two. I said, um, I, I just ordered some fry. And they said, yeah, but, 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 but what we got to do, we got to cook yours. See, see, the, 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 you got to go and pull over there in number two because we cook. Y'all going to get it in a minute because we cooking yours. And so I said, what? They said, yeah, you, you wanted us to do something special. You didn't want what everybody else want because if you, oh, my God, if you had a got, Lord, help your boy. If you had a got what everybody else got, you could have been got yours and on your way by now. He said, but because uh, you order something special, uh, you got to wait on it. Uh, and that's what I stopped by to tell somebody. Uh, it's the only reason you wait, because uh, he got to prepare something special. Uh, it's the only reason you still waited, because uh, he got to prepare something special. Uh, and let me tell you, Paul, uh, while I was waiting, uh, I saw folk pull up the window uh, and get theirs and go. Uh, but I was sitting there waiting. I saw folk pull up at the window and get theirs and go. But I'm the only one waiting. Lord, help your boy. And then when they came.
came out, they said, Mr. Baker, here go your order. When I got those fries, they were good and hot. Lord have mercy. What you trying to tell me, Pastor, that if you wait on God, it's going to be just like you want. You better touch somebody and tell your neighbor it's going to be just like you want it. The job going to be just like you want it. The relationship going to be just like you want it. Lord, help your boy. You better push dumb dog on body and tell your neighbor in 2024, I'm going to get what I want. I'm not going to settle for what everybody is getting. I'm going to Wait on the job, wait on the marriage, wait on the business, wait on the promotion. I'm a wait on. I'm a wait on. Wait on. He, he's um, he's working. Your your patience. It's your time, but he's he's working. Your patience. And, 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 and the second thing is, people tell you, um, not only perfecting my patience, um, but what you got to understand is, is that, um, that when it's your time, you need to understand that decisions determine direction. Who take it? That a text said that when um, Moe's on the back side of their mouth, it said that, um, he said that he saw the burning bush. He said when he saw it, he made a decision. Let me go see what this all about. He, he, he said, he said um, let me go see about it. Because, because this is what I need to understand. That what gets your attention will determine your decision. Oh my God. That um. And, and you got to understand that your decision will determine your direction. That, that, that when you, oh my God, that when you give attention to people that don't like you, it will determine your decision and determine your direction. Lord, oh my God. That, that, that when you, oh, let me talk to somebody. That when you give um, attention to people who lie on you, People that left you, people that hurt you, crazy family member, crazy church members, that when you, they get your attention, they will determine your decision. Oh my God. And your decision will determine your direction. What do you say? That, that, that Moses, Moses, he, he makes a decision to go and see the bush. And when he makes that decision that God takes his life in a whole nother direction. That's why you got to be careful what gets your attention. Oh my God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to talk about seven folk and I got to tell you that you got to be good stewards over your attention. That you got to learn how to manage your attention. Lord help us. Oh my God. That, that, that's what I want to tell you. That you got to learn how to manage your attention. And the third thing, and the third thing is, is that um that you got to understand this is that sometimes rejection is a door to selection. What, what, what are you saying, Pastor? <clears throat> that the Bible said that, that what God does, that God finds um, Moses on the backside of Midian. That, 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 that Moses is where he is because he got rejected. Let me back it up and say it again. That, that, that Moses is on the backside of a million. That Moses is there because he got rejected. Um, that, that if he had a never got rejected, he would have never went on the run. 
And if he had never went on the run, he would have never been on the backside of the mountain. And he would have never been on the backside of, oh Lord, help your boy. He would have never been on the backside of the mountain. He would have never saw the burning bush. And when he would have never saw the burning bush, that God would have never spoke. And he would have never heard God. And if he never heard God, his life would have never shifted. And I wish I had somebody in here that you want to praise God for everybody that rejected you. I wish I had somebody. Help me get out of here. Grab your neighbor and tell your neighbor that it's your time that everybody that rejected you that will set you up for God to choose you for something greater grab somebody cause y'all ain't happy and tell your neighbor neighbor they rejected me I'm glad that they didn't give me the job cause when they said no God said yes I stopped by to tell somebody that if you've been rejected in this season it's only because it's your time that God is getting ready to open a door that you didn't know was there I'm going to tell you this story and I'm going to get out the way Lord help you boy I was working on a job for the last 22 years and when I found out somebody called me and they said Baker we got a job for you I said nah I'm good no, I'm good. I ain't worried about it. I'm fine. But I was talking to my supervisor. And she said, Baker, what we ought to do, we ought to get you some more money. I said, yeah, that'll be good if you get me some more money. Because I like some more money. But when she called corporate, corporate said, we can't give him no more money. Well, oh, my God. But the other people said they was going to give me some money. But if they're up first people ha, had a told me yes ha, I would have stayed there ha, but because they told me no ha, it opened up a door ha, for a new opportunity ha, because the job I was on ha, I was working 12 hours ha, sometime 18 hours ha, they was waking me up ha, in the middle of the night ha, saying lieutenant ha, we need you to come in ha, I get halfway home ha, and my phone rings Ring, ha, said I need you to come back ha, and, oh Lord help your boy ha, but the new job ha, because the old job told me no ha, and the new job told me yes ha, I work from home ha, I be sitting around in my bedroom slippers ha, I only work 8 hours ha, off on Fridays ha, ain't got to worry about nobody calling me ha, in the middle of the night ha, I stop by to tell somebody when they tell you no God got a greater yes that's what I stopped by to tell you grab your neighbor and tell your neighbor that God got a greater yes when they tell you no it because something better is on the way something greater is on the way and the only thing that I want to tell you live in faith that it's your time that your no is a setup for something greater your no is an opportunity for something bigger cause won't he do it or oh, won't he do it well how do you know there's something greater cause the bible said that they took my Jesus and they marched him down the Via Della Rosa put nails in his hand put nails in his feet he hung his head and did he die he died on Friday night he died on Saturday morning he died on Saturday night but early early one Sunday morning he got up with all power and I stopped by to tell you it's your time cause he got up it's 
your time. Caught him putting nails in his hand. It's your time. Cause he hungry dead. And did he die? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your time. After 40 years, God came to Moses. Well, what, what are you saying, Pastor? What are you saying? After he messed up, after he made some mistake, God come back after 40 years. Why, why, why you keep saying that? Because what it lets me know that God never changed his mind about Moses. God has not changed his mind. God hadn't changed his mind about you. God hadn't changed his mind about what he wants for you. God hadn't changed his mind about what he showed you. But you can be in some place so long that you think he changed his mind. But I stopped by to tell somebody in living faith, God hadn't changed his mind. And it's your time. It's your time. It's your time for your family. It's your time. You've been in a dry place, but God was preparing you for where he's taking you. He's preparing you for where he's taking you. You've been trying to figure this thing out and, and you've been here so long and, and now you want to give up on what God gave you and you, you're tired, but he said, I'm building character and patience in you. He said, because I got, to, I, got, I got to build something in you. Because if I give you the blessing, you won't have the character to stay where the blessing want to take you. You want it because you see everybody else getting it. Everybody else doing it. He said, but I'm working something. I'm working something in you. He said, that thing's special order. And, and sometimes, um, sometimes you have to watch others get theirs while you waiting on yours. See, see, the maturity of your faith is how I watch others get theirs. Lord. See, see, some folk watch, I don't like that, that's too small. But because you, you ain't got yours yet. Oh, oh they own that little, they own that little business. So why I got to be little? I mean, why? Yeah, they, they, they ain't got but a four bedroom. I mean, okay. You still in the apartment, so why why it ain't got to be? I mean, why? He 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 drive that little Mercedes. I mean, I mean it still say Mercedes. I mean, it, you know. I mean, why I got to be Lou? I mean, I'm just you know I'm just saying. I'm just saying what I'm just saying what I'm saying. But I want to tell somebody, I want to tell you, living faith, it's your time. It's your time. You, you, you've been in a, in, a, in a dry place, but it's your time. You're ready for what God has for you. It's your time. You've been through some stuff, but it's, it's your time. It's your time. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If there be anyone that, that don't know Jesus, 
today is a good day to get to know him. Today is a good day. The old church said he's an old savior. And for young folk, he's a young savior. But for everybody, he is the savior. It said no man come to the father unless they come by the son. And he's waiting on you. And it's your time. It's your time. Amen. Somebody give God a hand clap or pray. I'm so grateful. God has given us a word to remind us it's our time. As we walk into this new season, knowing that it's our time, we want to make sure we take time to appreciate the time God has given us. Before we take up or we do our offering, our, our giving, I want to ask you to pray for two families. I want you to pray for Pastor Eben here in about 50 minutes, he's going to eutilize his wife, Pastor Prentice Edmund. So we're praying for that church family. On yesterday, Pastor J.W. Calvin left a meeting at the church and didn't make it two blocks before he had a heart attack and died. So I want to pray for that family and that church family. Yesterday was at a service for one of the young girls who got killed Easter weekend. The pastor said something in the sermon that stuck with me, and I want us to think about it. He said, y'all need to do something about the community violence. That's what people are saying. He shared something. He said, I got a solution for it. Here's a solution. Introduce them to Jesus. I shared with the church this morning at breakfast, I said, not only should we introduce them to Jesus, but we need to make sure they get acquainted with Jesus. Not only are they acquainted with Jesus, but they know Jesus. And then they serve Jesus. I want you to pray for that family and those families who are going through that tragic loss. And so if you will, let us pray. Father, as we bow our heads with breath in our lungs there's a grieving community God we're grieving because death has invaded our lives God I pray for your confident arms to be with those families show yourself to them God as a comforting God a compassionate God a healing God and a forgiving God. Father, I pray now that you will be with the spouses and the children and the siblings and the parents, God, in this troubling time. But Lord, let them know you're still God and you're able to heal any hurt and comfort any issues that they may be going through. Father, I pray that the church will become evangelists, that we will go ye therefore teaching all men, all boys and girls about you. Father, we come to introduce you not through words, God, but through our actions, through our life so people can come to know you. God, we're praying for this city to be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. God, we're praying that you will flood these city walls. God, your compassion drew us while we were yet sinners. Let us do likewise, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, did not our hearts burn with the man of God was preaching? Come on, come on, come on. You, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God a hand praise for my friend, my brother, this preaching machine, amen. God bless you, Second Baptist, you are blessed.
to have one of God's generals in the pulpit every Sunday. I thank God for him coming. Thank you so much. Um, as we come, live in faith, please don't forget that we ask you to pledge $140 for the church anniversary. Uh, our goal is to make sure we get our projector and our screen up so that we can engage you doing service and doing Bible study. Um, we pray to you that you would do that as we come. Uh, to give offering. Uh, you don't have a singing pastor, so I'm not going to sing. Um, but musicians, y'all can play. And if we got a volunteer, you're welcome to come sing. But I want to make sure you're happy as you give. Amen. I'm so grateful to all of you. And thank God for both of those beautiful ladies that we call ours. Uh, Lady Baker and Lady Paul. Y'all look mighty good together. God bless you. Right before we in the spirit of giving, I have a gift for Lady Baker. Thank you for gracing us with your presence today. We love Pastor Baker too, but we're going to show you some love also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. It's time. But I'm going to take a little personal. It's my time. <laughs> All right. But um, we're going to I know we always do our um, prayer respects and say um, testimony, but we got to get to a funeral, so I'm going to kind of cut that a little short. Um, but we, if I can get you to repeat after me. As we give today's offering, we all believe in the Lord for. Love one say, Health and better health. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Dividends and benefits. Sales commission and settlements. Estates and inheritance. Interest in income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, finding money, groceries received, unexpected gifts and surprises, bills paid, debts demolished, bills paid, debts demolished, bills paid, debts demolished. Demolish. What time is it? All right, we ask the outside to stand up and face the wall. The earth will lead you out from the rear. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you for your gifts. Amen. Let us all stand. Amen. Let us all stand. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Um, let us pray that great and that awesome God, we come now. We thank you. We thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard. We pray, God, that you would give us direction that we give our attention to you, that we might get to the place you will have us to be. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, this day hint for and forevermore, and the people of God said amen, amen, amen. Look at somebody and tell them, say, I love you. <laughs> 